Well, do you also think that the youth are indeed writing the future? Do you also think that the future belongs to the youth? If you believe it, please raise your hands. Some light, please. I can't see. <laughs> I need some light. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I note that the majority of you bel believe that, and the rest really don't. Personally, I won't hide the fact that I don't believe it. I don't believe the sentence that is often hammered into our heads, like a truism, an absolute truth, or the obvious. Indeed, in its essence, the future is the result of the past and the present combined. This is on the one hand. On the other hand, we don't have to forget that today's youth won't be young in the future, or at least they won't be as young as they are today. From here, I am on the verge of believing that the sentence, the future belongs to the youth, is just a lure, a hoax, a bait, a vast deception. Let's see. Who decides, who really decides what our countries, our Mediterranean, our world will be like in five, in ten, or even in twenty years? Are they th really the youth? We, who will obtain the levers of power? Will the young people seize them? Will at least a small part of the youth be involved in, uh, in decision-making positions? Personally, I see no sign, no hint of evidence, no clues to believe that this sentence is true or is not misleading. Sorry, <laughs> I'm really, really <laughs> under pressure. <Yeah. laughs> okay, some of you would object and say, Youth is not related to age. It is rather a matter of soul, heart, and mind. I can only recognize and bow down before this objection. Actually, my friend, the French author, Stéphane Essel, remained young, creative, and full of vitali vitality until the sad uh, day that he left us. His creativity mainly targeted the youth. He had been working to make us understand that our future is built here and now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because, yeah, thank you. He thought that we have to aim for the moon and to reach for the stars to change the world and to change the human. He urged us to get angry. It's time for outrage, he wrote. But is Stefan Essel the exception or the rule? Look at those who are planning wars, those who are polluting the earth and the sky. Those who just seek profit without, uh, regardless of the harm that they can cause to the depths of our planet as well as to the damage that they can cause to its surface. Look at all of those who instead of bringing us closer to each other are every day building new barriers and higher walls, as it is the case for traveling from the south to the north, or for the separation wall between Palestinians and their occupiers. Personally, I can't believe the sentence that the future belongs to the youth. I'm not just skeptical. I can't believe at, uh, it at all. And to better explain to you why I don't believe it at all, I will tell you rather concisely a part of what my country, Tunisia, has experienced in recent time and what it continues to witness today. 
Well, I guess and I suppose that all of you have heard about our revolution, that which Western media was quick to label the Jasmine Revolution and which proclaimed the announcement, the Arab Spring. I don't know if you did know it or no, but my country didn't experience more than two presidents in more than half a century. The two of those presidents were forced to leave office. The first following a coup hatred by his successor, and the second under the conditions you already know. He cordially fled the wrath of the youth. The youth challenged his oppressive force, forces, his minions, and the omnipotence of his party state. Being one of those who lived almost entirely under the regime of the second, I can tell you that at the time I've never known a demonstration, a sit-in, or any other kind of protest actions, except in books, movies, or on TV channels. Not to mention free debates, exchange of opposite ideas, freedom of speech, and the ability to be active in another party except the one that is dedicated to serve the dictator and his clan. Around me, in my family, in the circle of my parents' friends, and despite being prone to protest and refusing to line up, I mainly heard nihilistic, negative, pessimistic comments on the situation. It was said as, it, as if it were the uh, implacable decision of the fate that changes, uh, that things are far for, from change and evolution. It was said that our people have concluded a non-reviewable contract with resignation. We consider the fact of refusing to line up and to kneel down, not being involved with corruption and nepotism, and refusing to be among the vibrant advocates of the dictator as acts of revolution, resistance, and bravery. Of youth, it was said that their ambitions were mainly materialistic that they were just seeking to lead a luxurious and good life at any price, that they have lost any sense of responsibility, solidarity, de uh, de devotion, sorry, and dedication to others and to their country. The movement that led to the ousting of the dictator on the 14th of January 2011 have proven the opposite. Indeed, the youth and many among our women and girls mainly defied and challenged the oppressive forces of the regime. They offered their bare chest to bullets and truncheons. They inhaled tear gas and they slept on the squares. Yes, our youth managed to rekindle the flame and to make the impossible possible and to threaten a regime that seemed untouchable. It is our youth who chanted employment, freedom, and dignity, and refused the establishment of a new dictatorship as a replacement to the one that started to crumble. It is our youth who mastered computer skills and new technologies of communication and managed to go through the threads of the wall of silence and the leaden shroud that muzzled our country for decades. But can't you see that the very old, the old, the not very young, and the less young are the ones who manage, <coughs> who manage to take power and to sit down with the, all their weight on our destiny. Again, it was shown that, the f that saying that the future belongs to the youth is selling wind and illusion. Just another example, and I will release you. Too bad for you if you have a difficult time, but you shouldn't have invited me. So, another example. Maybe you didn't know it, but traveling has become for us, the inhabitant of the southern shore of the Mediterranean Sea, a challenge, a dream that is often impossible to fulfill. This wasn't the case when my mother was a student. When my mother was a student, 
She had the opportunity to travel easily, especially in Europe. On the other hand, a young teacher sh uh, showing no sign that I had, uh, no sign suggested that I had the intention to settle down, I would have never been able to travel as much as I do if I weren't the blogger you invite to give speeches and to take part in conferences. Try to find out and you will realize how it is difficult, hard, insulting and humili humiliating to queue to beg for a few days paid visa. You will realize that once arrived to your destination, you would face other obstacles. Ask yourself all these questions, then tell me if it is possible for young people to communicate with each other, to organize, to dream together of a better future, and to destroy all the walls that countries are building around their territories. Tell me if it is possible to believe in a bright, luminous, and glittering future for our youth. Well, I will finish by confessing to you that despite my harsh words that are difficult to digest, I remain convinced that it is still possible to build a better world and a brighter future. But this will only happen if the youth become aware that it is up to them to do so by themselves and here and now. It's time for outrage, let's get angry, and let's start to build our future now. Right now, it's according to his or her abilities and forces. Thank you.